hello out there welcome to this tutorial on statistics which particularly will be looking at quarters of grouped data in this video we'll be covering how to calculate upper quartile lower quartile interquartile range and semi interquartile range so now we'll look at the formulae that is the formula for upper quartile, lower quartile, interquartile range, and semi interquartile range. For lower quartile, we call it Q1, which is equal to L plus N over 4 minus FC all over FQ, then multiplied by W. And for upper quartile, we call it Q3 equal to L plus 3N over 4 minus fc over fq multiplied by w we need to understand what all these parameters represented in the formula stand for so we have a uh, l is the lower class boundary of the quartile class whether lower quartile or upper quartile if you know the class interval for the lower quartile and upper quartile we look for the lower class boundary of the class then also we have a n is the total frequency of the distribution that is the sum of all the frequencies and for fc is the cumulative frequency before the quartile class either q1 or q3 the sum of all the frequencies before the quartile class we have a fq is the frequency of the quartile class while w is the width of the quartile class or just the width of the class intervals in general so these are what the parameters represented in the two formulae stand for then we now go to interquartile range interquartile range is q3 minus q1 while the semi interquartile range the semi interquartile range is half of interquartile range which is the q3 minus q1 over 2 and uh, these are the formulae we will be using in this uh, video while we look at a problem the problem here is the table below shows the marks of applicants in a selection test calculate the upper quartile lower quartile interquartile range and semi interquartile range um, the column for max is given here and the frequencies are given here so we need from our formula we need the class boundary at least specifically the lower class boundary of each of the class intervals we need the cumulative frequency okay so we need to create those uh, columns that is first cumulative frequency of this the first class interval here we still maintain 12 as cumulative frequency and the next class interval is 12 plus 21 which gives 33 the next one is 33 plus 34 which gives 67 the next one is 67 plus 20 87 and 87 plus 6 gives 93 93 plus 4 gives 97 97 plus 3 gives a hundred this is emphatically telling us that the sum of the frequencies is hundred that is our n then the next one is the lower class boundary for the lower class boundary um, it is the average of the lower class boundary and the upper class boundary of the class before it if we consider the class interval before this is 11 to 20 and the upper class there is 20 plus the lower class here divided by 2 gives 20.5 that would form the lower class boundary of this class interval in the same way this upper class boundary plus the lower class boundary here divide by 2 will give us 30.5 in the same way 40 plus 41 divided by 2 gives 40.5 50 plus 51 divided by 2 gives 
60 plus 61 divided by 2 gives 60.5. 70 plus 71 divided by 2 gives 17.5. And 80 plus 81 divided by 2 gives 80.5. And uh, so far, so good. These are the instruments we need to calculate the upper quartile, lower quartile, interquartile range, and semi interquartile range. So we now start from a part of the problem that is the upper quartile. So bringing in our formula, we have Q3 equal to L plus 3N over 4 minus FC all over FQ, then multiply by W. So what we do, we need to identify the upper quartile class interval. So in that case, the best way to get that is to find this, that is 3N over 4. So having 3n over 4 will be 3 over 4 multiplied by n. Our n is 100. So multiply by 100. 100 divided by 4 gives 25 times 3 gives 75. So to get the upper class quartile class, what we do is we go to the cumulative frequency. Where is 75 accommodated? This is 75 is accommodated here in 87, which means 75 or 75th item is within this 87, and the class interval to that is 51 to 60. So that is our upper quartile class. So we'll be making reference to all to this uh, interval while we look for L. To get our L, that is the lower class boundary of the quartile class. So that will give us 50.5. We have it at 50.5. Then the next one is FC. FC is the cumulative frequency of the class before the upper quartile class. And the upper quartile class is this, the cumulative frequency of the class before it. The FC here is before it because the class intervals are arranged in ascending order. If the class intervals are arranged in descending order, then our FC will be cumulative frequency of the class after the upper quartile class. So here it is arranged in ascending order. So we look at the before it the cumulative frequency of the class before it which is 67 so we have it as 67 then the next thing is fq that is the frequency of the upper quartile class and uh, fq now is equal to 20 this is the frequency of the upper quartile class and that's there then we go to W, that is the width, the class width. The class width here is uniform. So that is, there's difference of 10, 10, 10, 10 within the lower class boundary. So that difference of 10 is the class width, which gives a W to be equal to 10. And we have gotten all the parameters we need to calculate Q3. So we say Q3 now, we substitute L1 is 50.5 plus open bracket 3N over 4 is 75. So we have 75 minus 67 because FC is 67 all over FQ, which is 20, then over 20 multiplied by 10, which is the W. So we have 50.5 plus 75 minus 67 is 8 over 20, then multiply by 10. Is 0, we cancel 0 here. 8 divided by 2 gives uh, 4. So we have 50 plus 4, which gives 54.5. That represents the upper quartile of this distribution in the table so we are done with a uh, problem a we go to b that is the lower 
quartile. In the same way, we bring in our formula, which is Q1 equal to L plus N over 2 minus FC over FQ multiplied by W. We need to identify the lower quartile class. To get the lower quartile class, this is the parameter we are going to use. So we say N over 4, which is 1 over 4 times 100. Still remember our N is 100 because there are total of 100 applicants that took part in the test. So 100 divided by 4 gives 25. So we go to the cumulative frequency and see where 25 is accommodated. This is 33, so 25 is accommodated here. Therefore, the lower class quartile class is here. So we'll be making reference to this for Q1. And now that will give us uh, our L. The L here we said is the lower class boundary of the quartile class. And this is our quartile class. So the lower class boundary is 30.5. We have it as 30.5. And uh, our FC, that is the cumulative frequency of the class before it, since it is arranged in ascending order of class interval. And that will give us a uh, 12. So FQ now is the frequency of the quartile class. The frequency of the quartile class here is 21, and that gives FQ to be 21. Our class width still remain 10. So we now substitute all these parameters into the equation to get our Q1. Our L is 30.5. I have 30.5 plus open bracket N over 4 is 25. So I have 25 minus FC is 12, so minus 12 over FQ, FQ is 21, then multiply by 10. So we have it as 30.5 plus 25 minus 12 is 13 over 21 times 10. 13 over 21 times 10 will give us 6.19 so we can easily carry out that one from our calculator 13 over 21 multiplied by 10 gives 6.19 adding to this we have 36.69 which represent the lower quartile of this distribution so we now go ahead to calculate the interquartile range to calculate the interquartile range, we bring in our formula. Interquartile range is Q3 minus Q1. And our Q3 is 54.5. And our Q1 is 36.69. So simplifying this, we have the interquartile range to be 17.81. And uh, we immediately go ahead to calculate semi-interquartile range. To calculate semi-interquartile range, um, semi-interquartile range is half of interquartile range, which is Q3 minus Q1 over 2. We've already done that. So our semi-interquartile range will be 17.81 over 2. And that will give us a... Uh, 8.905 which represent the semi interquartile range of this uh, distribution and that is the end of the solution to this problem and this is the end of this tutorial I hope you enjoyed it do like and share this video remember to subscribe to our YouTube channel check the description section of this video on our YouTube channel to get other topics on statistics. Until I come your way again, goodbye.